Hey guys, check this out, this is me in a solo Master Nightfall while being under the recommended power level. And just look at what happens to this mini boss, absolutely melted. Today we are going into a detailed breakdown to show all the awesome interactions that you can do with Gerfalcon's Hoberg. From huge purple glowing orbs that proc volatile, weapons capable of destroying bosses thanks to a weird interaction, to even swords capable of weakening targets and giving you overshields. This is my in-depth guide for Gerfalcon's Hoberg and I'm going to cover everything that you need to know. First, let's talk about the exotic itself, because it went from being broken to being disabled, just for them to later rework it so it grants volatile rounds after exiting Invis. Which is huge, because we hunters have always struggled to proc volatile, as the only way to do it was by getting grenade final blows, which in easier content it was somewhat doable, but as soon as enemies get tougher it becomes a lot less consistent. So in my opinion, this is a big W for Hunters. Gerfalcons also provides us with a 35% damage boost, a reserve overshield for you and your teammates, and improved class ability regeneration whenever we perform a finisher while being invisible. Now, don't underestimate the improved class ability regen, because it's actually very big. In fact, you get your whole dodge back if you perform a finisher while being invisible. Also, to proc the reserve overshield, all you have to do is use your class ability. And for those that don't know, void overshields provide a 50% damage reduction while they're active, and it does stack with resilience and well of tenacity as well as other damage reduction sources. Now let's talk about the second most important thing that makes this exotic an absolute beast. That's our aspect, Stylish Executioner which makes us invisible whenever we defeat an enemy that's either weakened, suppressed or volatile. So you can already see how this aspect perfectly synergizes with Girl Falcons that constantly gives us volatile rounds. It basically means infinite invisibility as well as infinite volatile rounds. Now before we get any deeper, I want to give a quick shout out to Apex Gaming PCs, which I have worked with to make my own personal PC line, which is now available for you guys to check out. You can customize the PCs as you please, and remember, you can also use my discount code TREY for up to $250 discount. What I have shown so far are the basics of the build. You go invisible, shoot an enemy to proc volatile rounds, which makes you invisible again, allowing you to reposition to a better spot, angle, or simply to survive. However, this gets much more complex when you start adding other buffs like the Vower, which we can proc with our fragment Echo of Starvation, which allows us to heal back to full HP whenever we get a kill. It also provides a really good amount of grenade energy on kills as well. Keep in mind that if your super bar is full, you won't be able to pick up an orb of power, meaning you won't activate the Vower. We also have mods like Wall of Tenacity that give us a 50% damage reduction, which does stack with overshields and resilience, making you very tanky. We are also using Font of Might for that nice 25% damage increase to our void weapons. But wait, it doesn't end here. The weapons are what truly make this build interesting. We have weapons that break the game and allow you to proc volatile way too fast. We have weapons with Repulsor Brace that provide you with a free overshield whenever you defeat a void debuffed enemy. We even have a sword that weakens enemies allowing you to go invisible and as if that wasn't enough, it also rolls with Repulsor Brace so you can slice your way through any enemies while constantly having an overshield. There are many more weapon combos which I'm going to show later in the video, but for now let's get into the aspects, fragments and mods. So stat wise you shouldn't be worried too much about your stats, because we are going to be having a lot of penalties from Void, but I mean this is how Void works pretty much. So as long as you have 100 resilience, that's all you need. Then invest the rest on mobility, just to get your dodge a little bit faster in case you need it, and then obviously the rest in recovery. Ability wise we are using Gambler's Dodge just to get our melee back and we are using Vortex Grenades because this is the most reliable one. Aspect wise like I mentioned we are using Stylus Executioner just to make us invisible whenever we defeat a debuffed target and then we are also using Vanishing Step just to make us invisible whenever we dodge. 
Fragment wise, we are starting with Echo of Persistence, and this is going to allow for our invisibility over Shields and Devour to last longer. Now, because we are going to be using all three of those buffs, this is very essential. Then we have Echo of Undermining, which is a very cool fragment because it allows your grenades to debuff the enemy, which means this is also going to make you invisible. Next up, we have Echo of Starvation, which allows us to proc Devour whenever we pick up an Orb of Power. And finally, we have Echo of Obscurity, which is going to make us invisible whenever we finish an enemy. Once again, this synergizes very well with the build, and sometimes when you're out of dodge, all you have to do is simply walk up to an enemy and finish him. Mod-wise, we are going to be keeping this very simple, and we are going to be sticking with Elemental Well mods. That means that we are using Well of Tenacity on our helmet, and this is going to give us that 50% damage reduction buff whenever we pick up a Void Elemental Well. Make sure to pair this up with Harmonic Siphon, because this is going to be creating those orbs of power, which will in return activate Devour. On our gauntlets, we are using a second copy of Well of Tenacity, which this is going to give us a total of 11 seconds of 50% damage reduction. Now, if you're not using grenade launchers, then just get rid of it and then put a stat mod instead. On our chest plate, we are using Elemental Ordnance, and this is what's going to be making that Void Elemental well for us after we defeat a target with our grenade. Feel free to change this up for Elemental Armaments if you feel like you're going to be getting more kills with your weapons, but honestly, I found that Elemental Ordinance is really consistent. On our Leg Armor, we are using Font of Might for that 25% damage boost to our Void Weapons whenever we pick up a Void Elemental Well. And finally, on our Cloak, we are using Elemental Time Dilation, which is going to allow for our Wells of Tenacity to stack together, as well as increase their duration and the duration of Font of Might. Lord Kelvin's Basilisk is a very nice mod, that way you can take care of overloads with your grenade, and then solo operative is very nice if you're playing solo. If you're not playing solo and you're playing with teammates, then you can always use Utility Kickstar instead, or you can even use Monochromatic Maestro. Now, I wouldn't really recommend Weekend Clear, because we already apply enough debuffs with our grenade and our smoke bomb. Also, if you're facing champions, you can equip Lucent Finisher, that way you will never run out of heavy ammo. When it comes to weapon suggestions, there are so many of them, and you cannot go wrong with either. First of all, we have the Champion and Boss Melter combo, which requires you to stack up as many overtime effects on the boss as you can, such as Wither Horde or Vortex Grenades, because this will allow you to constantly proc Volatile on the enemy, resulting in some disgusting damage. Best weapons to do this are Trace Rifles and Machine Guns, because these two shoot extremely fast. For example, Retrofit Escapade, Hollow Denial, and Wave Splitter are excellent choices for this combo. Talking about Wave Splitter, this weapon is especially good with this build because once you pick up an orb of power, the weapon will supercharge and start weakening targets, allowing you to go invisible. Next up, we have weapons with Repulsor Brace, which are almost essential if you plan on soloing hard content because they allow you to play much more aggressive while also dying less. Hollow Denial, Unforgiven, Wilder Flight and even the other half are excellent picks for this. I mentioned the other half because this sword not only can roll with Repulsor Brace, but also with Flash Counter, which allows for your next sword swing to weaken a target if you block at the right time. But even if you don't want this perk, you can always go with our all-time favorite Eager's Edge. So now not only you have a Speed Demon, but you also have an Add Clear Beast that procs Volatile and Overshields non-stop. Another weapon perk, which a lot of people might have forgotten, this basically turns your primary weapon into a void one after you get a void grenade kill. This allows you to take advantage of buffs like volatile rounds and font of might, while also generating orbs of power. The last breath, Fatebringer, Lodbrok C, and Fire Fright are all very good and somewhat easy to obtain weapons for this. Let's not forget about Pulse Rifles, especially this yesteryear with Golden Tricorn, which will allow you to deal ridiculous amounts of damage once you get it going. Or this Veles X, which comes with Golden Tricorn and Repulsor Brace, and you can easily get it from playlist rank ups at rank 16. Or even Graviton Lance that comes with Purple and Turnabout, for even more overshields. Also, the Void Projectiles that come out of this weapon when we defeat targets also proc Volatile debuff, so you'll see even more explosions. 
Now, if you want to stand out from the crowd with a huge purple aura around you, then Ruinous Effigy is what you want to go for. This trace rifle spawns orbs that you can pick up and go crazy with, because when you hold block, it applies volatile to your enemies and it doesn't even break invis when doing so. You can also slam it on the ground for some very strong AoE damage. We also have grenade launchers and trust me when I say, these slab really hard. They are an excellent option for add clear and with this season's unstoppable mod, now we can use them against champions. We have Wilder Flight, Fighting Lion and Dead Messenger. Lemonarch is another fantastic option that synergizes with Volatile Rounds because the poison also spreads the Volatile debuff, meaning you can make everything explode even more while healing yourself thanks to the Catalyst. Finally, this wouldn't be a Void build without our SMGs that have been an all-time favorite weapon for Void 3.0 and are still excellent choices that you should try out with this build. We have Funnel Web, The Title and Unforgiven, which I already mentioned. Now, don't underestimate the title as it comes with a very cool perk that provides us with class ability energy whenever we defeat targets. This will allow you to spam your dodge more often. There is many ways to play this build. It also depends on what difficulty of content you're doing. But regardless of the difficulty, the basic combo for this build is starting off with either your grenade or smoke bomb. The reason why we do this is because both of them weaken our target, meaning that once we defeat them, we will go invisible and this will allow us to start chaining our infinite volatile rounds. If you start with your grenade, this will also spawn a void elemental well, which will be very safe to pick up as you will be invisible. That well is going to proc Well of Tenacity and Font of Might, allowing you to play even more aggressive. I recommend saving your dodge for emergency situations like when you're about to die and need a quick way to get out, or when you want to finish an enemy, meaning that you dodge first before finishing them, that way you get your whole dodge back, get a damage boost and a reserve overshield for you and your teammates. Now, in harder content, the way I like to play this build is by taking my time between each invis phase. This allows me to kill an enemy, go invis, think about where I should reposition to, and then simply rinse and repeat until I have killed all the enemies. Don't be afraid to perform finishers on enemies, as this will make you invisible too. So if you are out of abilities, then you can always go for a quick finisher to reset. This build is an absolute blast and I honestly recommend you guys to give it a try and learn how to play it properly because you can do amazing stuff with this build. As always, I hope that you guys enjoyed today's video. Thanks for watching and I wish you Merry Christmas.